two more chickens gone, I'm afraid, love. I'll buy them fried rice. Sorry. <sighs> but why? I don't know. But it looks like a dog to me. And there's only one person around here but one of those. Jimmy bloody Corkill. That's it. Good girl. Take your time. <laughs> ah! Caught you red-handed. You what? You and your wretched hound even got filthy messes on the close. What, that there? Yes, that there. I just saw it with my own eyes. All right, all right. It was an accident. An accident? It's abhorrent. It's a hazard to public health. And I'm going to have you prosecuted. OK, OK, OK. Don't be going embarrassing. Not like that. It wasn't her fault. Bit of a dicky stomach. Must be something's yet. Oh, spare me your pathetic protestations. You are. And you will now remove the offending item. Go on. Which is it? Hey, Corkill, I want a word with you. Oh, bloody hell, what now? That flea bag of yours have a good breakfast, did he? You what? Yeah, I'm pie and fried rice, I bet. Half a tin of chappy and some winner lot, actually. Well, a couple of chickens as well, eh? Eh? Four chickens killed in two days, and I reckon it's a dog that done it. Oh, do you now? Well, it isn't this dog here, because she's been at home all night with me and our Jackie. Ask her if you don't believe me. Check me alibi. Don't you worry, I will. Jimmy! What's all this crap? Oh, bloody hell. Listen, I've got things to do. Jimmy! Special delivery. Well, what about this dog's deposit? Later. My pooper scooper! Bloody scumbag should be locked up. Come on, love. See you later, Bing. Right. Is everything all right, Elsa? Not really. Come and have a look at this. House of Horrors Gangland Secret. Yeah, read on. Number 10 Brookside Close. Safe house for some of England's most notorious gangsters. But who? That clown Jimmy, that's who. Damn the man. He's an absolute rogue. This is just what me and the Jordashes need when we're trying to get the wheels back on. Wait, I get my hands on him. I'm sorry, Mandy. She won't come to the phone. Yeah, but I only want to speak to her. Well, she is my daughter. OK. She won't even come to the phone. Doesn't want to know. Hey, come on, love. They're still your family. Not any more than that. Not after what they did to my dad. They just want a chance to talk. You know, explain. Explain how they killed my dad, you mean? I don't want to hear it. Look, I don't want to see them ever again. Come on, love. And why is everyone picking on me? You know, no one's picking on you. All those people from the newspaper asking me all those questions. I've done nothing wrong. I know you haven't. I can't even go outside anymore. I'll go to school, see my mates or anything. It's just not fair. I know, love. Listen, why don't we go out tonight, eh? Just you, me and Ollie. Where? Oh. Don't know. But we'll run out that front door, jump in the car and leave them journalists standing. Brilliant. What do you reckon, then? Bowling or something? Yeah, I love bowling. Right, then. We've got ourselves a date. <laughs> Rachel will come round eventually. I know she will. I want to see her now. Try and explain, make her understand. Yeah, I know you do, but maybe she just needs a little bit of time, eh? I want my daughter back. I want us all to be together again. Yeah, but, Mum, she won't talk to us. Well, she has to. I have to make her understand why I did it. Hey, come on, man. I did it for her, to protect her, but now I've driven her away. It's all right. Right, Sam, so I'm, uh, I'm getting off now. Just help yourself to anything, all right? Thanks. Eh, uh, Barry. While we're all together, mate, I just want to say, you know, thanks for letting us stay and all that. It's no sweat. Oh, you've been very kind. Yeah, well, it was all Sinbad's idea, really. And listen, uh, whenever you're ready, you can have your job back at the restaurant, all right? Look, uh, I better get going now. Got to catch up with that Divvy Jimmy, eh? Corkill Brothers' life of crime. One criminal caper after another. A gang of hard men as feared and notorious as the Sicilian mafiosi. I'd like to tell this lot just what sort of a big hard man Jimmy Corkill really is. K. 
killing kids in car crashes. The other man's a rank outsider selling his soul to these charlatans. Yeah, he'd sell his granny for ten bob, this one. As if the good name of Brookside Close hadn't suffered enough already at the hands of these hacks. I don't know, the police crawling with coppers and journalists. Cork and strut now like he owns a place with that mutt of his. Livestock being rustled. It's enough to make you want to sell up and move. Oh, for heaven's sake, Ron. You're not going to let the likes of Cork you'll drive you away, are you? Come on, old son, an Englishman's home is his castle. Now's the time to stand up and be counted. Repel these intruders. Don't give up. Hey, Bing's right. I mean, just because we've lost a few chickens doesn't mean we run. We've still got Kiev and he needs us. That's a spirit, Beverly. Show a united front. You're right, you know, Bing. You're dead right. It's time to take up arms starting tonight. Hey. Listen, whoever had them chickens, I'm going to be waiting for them when they come back. I'll stay up all night if I have to. And God help that corkle if it is him. So you didn't have a very good night, then? What? Where was he giving me daggers all night? Do you know, I could kill Mo for asking me to play. Things really that bad? I hope he can't stand the sight of me. The sooner I'm out of that place, the better. So you started looking like? Mm, I haven't really had a chance. Anyway, I'm not sure I could afford much. So what are you going to do? I don't know. I suppose I'll just have to grin and bear it for a while, won't I? Yeah, I suppose so. So, uh, what are you doing tonight, then? Well, nothing. I'm skinned. <laughs> Join the club. I don't fancy sitting round there with there all night. Uh, could I come round here and watch a bit of telly, like? Uh, well, I'm not sure about that. Why, what's up? Well, it's not me. It's just... Ah, oh, Jackie and Katie, they just get a bit funny about me having people around all the time. All right. I see. Well, I'm sorry. It's... at least they're flat, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Great. A night in with Rosie, then. Can't wait. I'll get it. Hello. Mandy, what are you doing? Yes, speaking. I'm waiting to see my daughter. What do you think I'm doing? Well, she's not going to come out of there with all those reporters hanging around, right. is she? Now, come on, sit down on me, cos a cup of tea. I don't want any more tea. I want Rachel. All right, there's no need to bite me head off. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I just... I just want to talk to her. OK, yeah, Yeah, I know you do. And I know it's doing your head and being stuck in here, but you're just going to have to okay, be patient. We all are. God, I feel like a prisoner. I can't go outside the front door. I just want to go home. Well, we can now. How can we? That was the police that given us the all clear to move back. Are you serious? Yeah, they finished in the house and we can move back when we want to. Well, what about all the tow rags from the papers? Well, there's only two of them left and they'll probably clear off later. We can sneak back when it's dark. Do you think that'll be okay? Well, we might as well be stuck in our own house as anyone else's. And the sooner we get home, the sooner things get back to normal and we can start living our lives again, can't we? Yeah, and we'll be next door to Rachel as well. Mm. Better get our bags packed tonight. Yeah? What makes you think it's anything to do with me, like? Cos there's pictures of you all over the place, that's why. And you're the only person with a small enough brain and a big enough mouth to come up with crap like this. What is it? The cork hill coes and noster. Do us a favour, will you, Jimmy? Do you think I'm thick or something? OK, OK, I might have given them a couple of tidbits. But they've made a right meal of it. They've exaggerated everything I've told them, eh? I'll tell you what, there better be nothing about me mar in here. Else you'll be six foot under the patio. So, come on, how much did you make? Judas. Oh. You know, uh, just a few quid, like. Oh, so you stitched your best mate Sinbad off for a few lousy quid, eh? How do you mean? Well, Mandy and Sinbad need this like a hole in the head. There's journalists all over the place, as it is. What price friends you paid to him? Right, I reckon you better get round there and apologise right now. You're joking, aren't you? Does it look like I'm laughing? Now, get round there now, Jimmy. Go on. Right, I'm going. Get out me sight. Is rattled your cage? Oh, it's just that jelly taunt to this shower. All oh, right. Uh, nice flowers. Do you like them? Yeah, for someone's Valentine, are they? A bit late if they are. Well, no, not really. I'm not really into that romantic stuff, you know. All oh, right. Sounds like you didn't get any cards then. Yeah, so uh, I'm broken hearted. It's terrible, isn't it? So, how many did you get? Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah, well, that's why I'm asking. So, how many did you get? That's for me to know and you to find out. You didn't get any, did you? <laughs> I've told you. I'm not telling. And here's me thinking the only reason you won't go out with me is because you got all sorts after you and you didn't get one Valentine's. Look at you. You're made up now, aren't you? No, in fact, I feel sorry for you. 
So after work, I'll take you for a little drink and uh, you can cry on my shoulder if you like. <laughs> nice try, Barry, but no thanks. And hadn't you better put them in some water before they wilt, like your face? That's a cup. No tar, just that one. So, we doing anything tonight? No, staying in. All right. Is Mike busy? We're both skin fits all. Well, <laughs> going out all the time, what do you expect? You still can't get your head round me seeing someone other than your Carl, can you? Oh, I can get my head round that. But I don't know how you've got the nerve to cop off with your husband's best mate and stay in the same house. <laughs> you've got no shame. Well, eh. Uh... I'm not being funny, like, but who are you to talk about, Shane? You what? Oh, don't call me innocent with me, Rosie. I saw you last night. What do you mean? You and your sister's fella in the pub. <laughs> you saw nothing. It all looked very cosy to me. I wonder what your mum would make of it. You little... Go on. Get your bags packed. Get out of here. Oh, don't worry. I'm going. Those in water. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Hey, how do you like them? They're lovely. Oh, I'm glad you like them. Hope Patricia does as well. For Patricia? Yeah, they're kind of a peace offering, you know. Would you put them in some water for us? Yeah, sure. What's up with your gob? Nothing. You didn't think they were for you, did you? Of course not. You did, didn't you? Now, why would I want to buy flowers for someone who won't even go out for a little drink with us? Well, maybe for certain someone had bought me flowers. I might have changed my mind about going out with them. Oh, dear. Looks like I've blown it again, eh? Looks like me and you are destined never to be together. Looks like it. Not unless... I don't even think about saying no. OK, you win. Where we go? Another ten minutes, eh, then we'll call it a day. Yeah. Girl, I could murder a curry or something. Hey, that's her. That's the young girl. Right, we'll follow them. Nice and easy now, but don't lose them. OK. That's the last of them gone. Come on, let's go home. And she threw the pair here out just like that. Stupid cat. She wouldn't have done it if Eddie was there. So where are you going to go now? I don't know. We haven't really got anywhere, have we? Well, have you got a mate or someone? They wouldn't want to know, not with Becca. Yeah, right. Is there, um, any chance, you know, just for tonight? Oh. Look, if it was up to me, yeah, but it's our Jackie and Katie's flat. I mean, they kicked off the other night about you staying here. Yeah. Well, I suppose me and Becca will just have to go to the coach station then. You what? Well, we'll have to go back to Reading if we haven't got anywhere here to stay. What, your mum and dad's? That's a bit far, isn't it? I'm sorry, but it's not my fault. Yeah, I know. Look. Well, Jackie's gonna go off her head, like, but... ..just so long as it's for one night. Just till you find somewhere local. Oh, Mike, thanks. You've saved our lives. Come on, Beck. Get your coat off. Stay with your Uncle Mike. Everything seems to be all right in there. Well, everything seems to be in order in here. Right, huh? Put the kettle on, then. Who's that? I don't know. But it better not be one of them scumbags from the papers. Oh, I thought you said they'd all gone. I thought they had. Jimmy, what are you playing at? 
There you go, mate. Uh, Welcome home, presents. Uh, Get down, you. Don't you meet me. You what? Crap in the paper. We saw it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, well, that's why I'm here. It wasn't my doing that. Oh, well, it never is, is it, Jim? It's always somebody else's fault. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you and me are finished. I, come on, don't be like that one, mate. Do one, Jimmy, will you? And you can plant that where the sun don't shine. This, my love, is a sophisticated anti-theft device. You see, I tie one end to my finger, the other to Kiev, then any sudden movement out there, and I know that the roadrunner is under the cosh. Then it's just me and Wiley Coyote face to face. Ah, oh, my hero. You dead brave. I've got you some soup and some butties. Keep your strength up. Ah, oh, great. I'll give this a couple of hours. What have you got? Watercress soup to start, and then some nice veggie my butties. Keep you going. Great. Tell you what. Why don't you jump under the covers with me? Keep me warm for a couple of hours. Just be joking. It's freezing. Anyway, carries on in a minute. Happy hunting. See you later, my love. So much for the United Front. Ah, caught up with you at last. God, what now? Not content with using Brookside Close as a public convenience for your dog, you now seem determined to drag the good name of the neighbourhood through the dirt as well. Well, I can assure you that the Residents Association will not stand for it. Give me a break, you, will ya? Giving you a break is about the furthest thing from my mind. I intend to pursue every avenue open to me to run you and your infernal hound out of the coast for good. Oh, do you now, Grandad? Evening, gentlemen. I'm looking for Mr. Jimmy Corkill. You found him, officer. Thanks very much, Bing. Detective Inspector Coburn, Manor Park Police. I'd like to ask you a few questions down at the police station, if you wouldn't mind. What about, like? Your time in residence at 10 Brookside Close. The house of hell. Hey, hang on, hang on. All that stuff in the papers, that was all blown out of proportion, you know. Into the car, please, Mr. Corker. Hey, hang on. I haven't done anything. Bing, tell him, will you? Into the car. Oh, what about my dog? What about Cracker? Lose it. Bing, there you are. You've got to be a joke. Oh, no, come on. Take a look. She wants to go with you. She likes you. Out of the question. I can't let her be wandering the streets. If you wouldn't mind, sir. But I can't. You would be helping us with our work. Oh, very well. Cheers, Bing. Nice one here. Hey, and listen, two tins of chappy a day and plenty of exercise. Man's best friend, good lord. So, here we are then. Yep, home sweet home. We could have gone back to mine, but the Jordashes are still there. But it's a bit early, isn't it? We could go somewhere else if you like. It may be early, but I've got work tomorrow. Anyway, I'm a bit tired. So, did you enjoy yourself then? Yeah, I did actually. Well, don't sound so surprised. Oh, I haven't hurt your feelings now, have I? Well, be soft. You can be quite sensitive, though, can't you? Can I? Yeah, helping Beth and her mum out like that. It's dead decent of you. Thanks. I quite like sensitive fellas. Oh, do you now? Yeah, Barry. I can open the door myself, thanks. Thanks for a lovely night. All right. So don't I even get a cup of coffee? Nah, you wake me dad anyway. So was that it then? Uh, how are we going out again? Well, let's just take it one step at a time, eh? Yeah, all right. And tonight was step one. So we'll see you Friday night, tonight. Yeah, OK. I'll see you Friday. Right. I look forward to it. Corkhill's been arrested and I've been left holding the baby, so to speak. How do you mean? Little cracker here. Oh. I'm looking after her. <laughs> anyway, I thought I ought to inform you that you can eliminate her from your inquiries. How come? Doesn't like chicken, do you, old girl? 
Just turn down a nice piece of breast. Oh, right, I see. God, must have fallen asleep. You ought to be careful, you know. You get hypothermia in here. Yeah, I'll just give it a run to that. Right? Take them up, Mark, you here. Pull up a chair. Got a flask of soup here. Uh, no. No can do, Ron. Thanks very much. But, uh, Jean's got some sausages under the grill for my four-legged friend here. Oh, my four-legged friend, is it now? You soon changed your bloody tune, didn't you? <sighs> well, I must admit I was a bit uncertain at first, but when you get to know her, she really is quite a companion, aren't you, Mother? Anyway, uh, keep warm and uh, sleep tight. I'll see you. Come on, my love. Those sausages will be burning. What were you doing out there? It's freezing. There's no lights on next door. There's nobody there. Well, they must have gone out for a bit. We could all do with a break from this, couldn't we? But where? Where have they gone? Well, I don't know. It could be anywhere. What if they've taken Rachel somewhere? What do you mean? Somewhere miles away from here, miles away from me. Oh, don't be daft. They can't do that, and they wouldn't do that. Yeah, but she said she never wanted to see me again. They'll be back later on, and Rachel will be with them. You'll see. I can't stand this, Simbad. I didn't want to drive her away. I know you didn't. But we're all home now. Everything's going to be all right. Everything will get back to normal eventually. When? Rachel won't have anything to do with me, and Beth and I are going to be thrown in prison. Why can't you leave me alone? A minute of your time, Rachel. Just a couple of questions, that's all. Please. Just go away. Oh, come on, Rachel. Now, I know you've been through a lot, but I want to help you. No, you don't. You just want to lie like everyone else. No, I want the truth. I want to stop all the lies. Well, how do you mean? Well, all the stuff in the papers and that. The things they've been saying about your dad. None of them are true. My dad didn't do any of those things. Me? No, they made it up. Who made it up? Well, they did. Who's they, Rachel? Who do you think? Beth and my mum. Why? I don't know why. Well, we want everyone to know the truth, don't we? I mean, why would they say those things? I don't know. But my dad didn't do anything. I said he did. Well, why would you say that? Because she blamed him. For what? Because she hates men. Because she's gay. for this one, do you? I don't believe this. You all right, love? No, I'm not all right. How can they print this stuff? It's disgusting. Because they're the scum of the earth, aren't they? And they don't give a toss about who they hate just as long as they sell papers. Gay love secret of murder suspect Beth. And I wonder which one of our loving neighbours gave them this little snippet. I'm sure it's nobody we know. Oh, no. Because they're the salt of the earth round here, aren't they? First Eddie Banks, and then Jimmy Corkill, and now this. Yeah, well, let's hope it's over now. I mean, them reporters have gone, haven't they? Well, they've got what they wanted. My private life splashed all over the papers. Oh, listen to him, singing his little heart out. And all thanks to you, eh? Staying up guarding them all night. Yeah, well, one of the family now, isn't he? Because you've been so brave, I've done you a nice special hot brekkie. Oh, nice one. <laughs> Muesli, chopped fruit, and hot milk.
Beth, I've got a visit to Jean. Oh. <laughs> oh, cracker, old girl. <laughs> He's all right. Yeah. He's baking all right for breakfast, then, is he? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you got me up this early in the morning to do this. Michael, I had to, son. I'm starving. I haven't had a decent meal in ages. Oh, go on. Oh. One decent crack on the head will do it. Michael, go on, it won't feel a thing, honest. No, Ty, I don't know if I can. Yeah, but just think about it, son. All golden brown sizzling in the pan. Roasties the works. I'll even go down a trading post and get some packs up. Go on. OK, hang on a minute. Uh, no, Dad, it's looking at me. I can't do this. You do it. I can't do it. Can I? I'm holding the bird. Well, I'll hold the bird. You do it. Go on, get the pan. Come on. Oh, yeah. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Careful with it. <laughs> I'm sorry about this, Kiev, but a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Eh, uh, what are you playing at? Uh, what, me? <laughs> yeah, um, what are you doing with that pan? Oh, this! <laughs> I've, uh, I just popped round to make our Michael some brekkie, didn't I, son? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a bit of a, bit of a fly-up, you know. <laughs> so, what are you doing with that, and why is it in our flat? Er, uh, got no eggs. We're you know, just waiting for it to drop a couple, you know, very... Very fresh, free range, very healthy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, gonna have a long wait, aren't you? How's that? Can't lay eggs, it's a cock. Never. God, well, I'll be blowed. Oh, well, I suppose we'll just have to forget about the fire base on. <laughs> yeah, well, no problem, Dad. <laughs> right, come on, girl. I mean, boy. <laughs> Let's get you home. Ooh. What's going on? Oh, morning. Hi, love. Didn't know you had visitors. Yeah, neither did I. Your mum didn't look too pleased to see me. You know, you know what she's like. And all this crap in the papers hasn't exactly helped things. So what's it like to be famous? Well, every time I open a paper, I learn something new about myself. What are they saying, Beth? Is it true? I thought you knew I was gay. You know what I mean. About... You know? Yes. We killed him. And he deserved it. No one will ever know what he was like or what he did. Oh, God. I mean... I don't know what to say. We don't have to say anything. It's better if you just keep out of it. What now? What do you mean? If you just want to talk, I'm a really good listener. All I've done is talk. I just want to try and forget about it. And what about us? You're better off without me. I'm trouble. My whole family's trouble. I'm sorry, but I can't handle this at the moment. Let's face it, do you really fancy becoming a prison visitor? They're not going to lock you up, though, are they? Not in the way you did it. Who are you trying to kid? We killed him, didn't we? Two men-hating women killed a poor, defenceless, good father. That's how they'll show it. That's what the papers are saying. You can't just give up. I'm not going to give up without a fight. But it's not fair to drag you into it. I've uh, just put the kettle on. It's all right, Viv's going. Bye, Beth. Take care. So I've just finished with her. Oh, love. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? Right. Go on. Off you go now. Go on. Go on. Back to your mates. Back to the wild. Go on. Off you go. Shoo. Ah, oh, Ron. Oh, all right, Ping. <laughs> You're up and about with the lark. Yeah, well, just fancy a bit of fresh air, you know. Any sign of your chicken, Russus? Uh, afraid not, no. So Kiev lives to fight another day, eh? Well, um, bad news, actually, Bing. Really? Mm. 
Looks like they got him. Must have been in the middle of the night after I went to bed. Oh, what a shame. I'm sorry, Ron. Yeah. Anyway, it seems your rustlers weren't the only ones moving around under cover of darkness. Eh? I understand the Jordash has moved back into number 10 last night. Did they really? Yes. I intend to call round there later in my official capacity as chairman of the BRA. Did you hear that? Uh, no. Heck, <laughs> she's still got Bonza with you, eh? <laughs> ah, yes, she's a good old girl. I've taken it upon myself to teach her some laboratorial etiquette. Oh. By the time her errant master returns, I hope to have instilled some discipline into her. Uh, in other words, you mean that she's not going to be crap on all over the place anymore? <laughs> yes, quite. Let's go through it again. Oh, I've told you, I don't know nothing about any post office jobs. And why should I believe you? Because it's true. So, you sell your story about your life in the house of hell to this lot. You tell them one thing and you tell me another. No. Well, yeah, no, look, all this, they got it all out of context, didn't they? The capers we got away with, you wouldn't believe it. Coppers. <laughs> We ran rings round him, no. me and me brothers. The Cosa Nostra Corkills. No! You've got it all wrong. It was nothing big. Not paying the poll tax and stuff. A little insurance scam. Is that all? Nothing else you want to tell me about? Okay. Oh, Billy. He did the lecky a couple of times. I get the impression you're trying to run rings round me, Mr. Corkill. No, I've told you everything. Honest to God, I am. So, you can't tell me anything about these. Barrels from a couple of sawn-off shotguns. Excavated from the Garden of Ten, Brookside Close. Recognised them, Mr. Big. Yeah, I'm sorry, love. They must have got them after you went to work. Poor Kia. It was my favourite, you know. And Josh's. Blood and feathers everywhere. Afraid he's a goner, love. Oh, I'm gonna miss him, you know, Ron. It was like he was part of the family. Yeah, I know, love. But you still got me and laughing boy here to keep you company, haven't you, eh? You'll get over it. Yeah. All right, son. Right. I showed you this. You my clothes. Go on, Casey. Just let them stay one more night, please. No way. They've got nowhere else to go. The flat's not big enough, I'm sorry. Look, they'll be staying in my room, won't they? Yeah, but we have to share everything else, don't we? There just isn't enough room. She's got a kid. I'm sorry, my but me and Jackie want them out today. I'll see you later. Hiya, Mike. All right. Better show it to him. Have you uh, read the paper today, son? Uh, no, I was just going to go and get one. Only there's a story in it about someone who we know. Oh, yeah. Someone, but someone who you know very well, actually. Oh, God, why you, is it? It's Beth Jordash. They say she's gay. Yeah, she is. Thanks for the paper. Gotta believe me. Guns? They're not my scene, then. But they were found in the garden where you used to live. The garden of a self-confessed hard man. A member of one of the most notorious gangs this country's ever seen. Yeah, but it was all talk, that. What? All of it? Yeah, all of it. Not the shootouts? Yeah. The bank raids? Yeah. Even the kidnapping? Yeah, all of it. Listen, that was just me sounding off. I'm not an hard man, me. I'm, I'm just a two-bit scary with a big mouth. All right, I've done a few houses in the past. I've been inside, done a bit of shoplifting, supermarkets and that. But guns, I've never been near one in my life. So all this is a pack of lies? Yeah, I'm a liar. I'm a soft get. I'm all sorts, but I'm not a gangster. I'm just a no-mark, me. Yeah, I know. Go on, do one. You what? Do you think we really believed any of this crap? You've had me up all night, why? Teach you a lesson. You what? Dragging me in here like this? I've got me rights, you know. Oh, yeah. You've got your rights. And I've got enough here to stick you away for five years. So beat it, soft lad. Yeah, just, uh, just on my way, Chief. And in future, 
Keep that big mouth of yours shut. I hope Beth's all right. She will be, the poor kid. She probably just needs a little bit of time to herself. <laughs> Rachel. Rachel. Hey, little Beth Jordash, we're in the drawers, back to front, who'd have thought of it? Ah, I suppose it takes all kinds. Mind you, with a get of a father like she had, probably put it off fellas for life. Oh. Come here, you. <coughs> what was that for? Well, I've just remembered how lucky I am having you as my fella. Dykes, murderers, all kinds hanging round. And I'll set up and bore an old Ron Dixon any day of the week. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, staying up with Kiev all night, you're my hero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me, you and our little Josh in our own house. Just the three of us. No one else. Couldn't be better. Yeah, I suppose I'm a lucky fella. True right, yeah. See you later, love. ta -da. Hello, Mike. Hello, love. Hiya. All right, Pop. What, are you going to stand there all day, or are you coming in to buy something? Uh, no, we haven't come to buy anything. Skint again, eh? No, no, it's not that. Well, are you going to tell me what it is? I'm running out of lives here. Um, well, it's just, you know, when my mum left? Yeah. And you promised her that there'd, there'd always be a space in the house for me? Yeah. Well, does the offer still stand? What, you're moving back home, son? Uh, well, maybe. Sort of. But I thought you were happy staying with our Jackie. Yeah, I am. Well, I mean, I was. But it's not just for me. How do you mean? A room for two little ones. Yes! <laughs> yes! So they let you out? Come here, come here. You what? The police, yes. they let you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just open with inquiries, you know. All blown over now. Yeah. They are, Bing, I'll take that. Thanks very much. Don't worry, girl, your master's here now, isn't he? Hey, hey, hey. Cheers, Bing. Yeah, I mentioned it. I rather enjoyed it. She's a good companion. Yeah, she is, isn't she, eh? Well, cheerio, old girl. Take care. Come on, Clex. I'll miss you. <sighs> All right, boss. Gee, you dippy. What's going on? Nothing. Just a bit of a misunderstanding with the local constabulary, that's all. Well, you shouldn't go open your big mouth to the papers, then, should you? And guess what? They've been trying to pin all sorts on me down there. Then me down for a shotgun merchant, you know. And what? Well, he found a couple of shotgun battles buried in the garden, number 10. Just keep it down with you, Dibby. All right, what have I done now? Look, you don't know how near you've come to landing me in a crap. How do you mean, like? Well, those shotguns, they were mine. You what? I buried those barrels there, didn't I, when my mum used to live there. I needed to get rid. You and guns? Yeah, that's right. They were mine. So keep that shut, all right? And keep away from the busies and the papers. All right, Jimmy? Yeah. I might as well get off. I'm getting on your nerves, aren't I? Hey, don't be daft. I am moping round here all day going on about Kevin and your sister, aren't I? If you can't moan to me, who can you moan to? Yeah, anyway, I'm getting off. There's a good weepy on later. No, why don't you come round here and watch it? Could do with the company. I mean, this one will be upstairs playing tapes with our lay. No, I'm not in the mood. Look, I told you, all this business with Kevin will sort itself out, I promise you. So stop walking round with a face like a wet weekend and get yourself round here for eight o'clock. I'll do with something to eat. Your chicken curry. My chicken curry. You've got yourself a date. <laughs> See you, love. See you, love. Now, don't be late. I won't. See you later. All right, babe. Try now. Rough country, not only in Africa and Asia, where they live, but also in Australia. Another animal that lives both in Africa and in the Asian continent is the rhino. Time to play Cupid, I think. Sort our Mo's love life out. Very early time. Hi, Kevin. It's Rosie. Numbers have been in danger. Hi. Particularly... She saw me and just ran my own daughter. What are you going to do then? I don't know, I just want her home. Right. What 
you doing? I'm going to go next door and see her. But she might not see you. Oh, she'll see me, all right. I'm going to get this mess sorted out once and for all. I'm going to bring her home. Bev? Bev? Hey, have I got a surprise for you? And have I got a surprise for you? Guess who's come home to roost? Kiev! Clever boy. Part of the family again, then, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Must be a home and chicken, eh? <laughs> yeah, looks like you, me and our Josh are gonna have to share our little love nest after all. Yeah, it certainly does. Ron? Have you, uh, met Sarah and Rebecca? <laughs> oh, hello, love. Hi, I've come to see Rachel. Oh, right. Uh, well, do you want to come inside a minute? Thanks. Hey, just wait there a sec, eh? OK. Rachel? Rachel? Yeah, what's up? Is someone here to see you? Who? <sighs> hey, who is it? Hello, Rachel. God, I'd never have known Beth was gay. No, me neither. Mind you, she's got a lot more to worry about at the moment, hasn't she? Do you, uh, fancy another cup of coffee? No, Tom. Call it a night, shall we? It's a bit early, isn't it? Yeah, but if we want to be up for work in the morning. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Can you use your bathroom? Yeah, help yourself. These. Oh, they're lovely, thanks. Uh, put them on the table, they look great. What do you think? Looks great. <coughs> Did you do all this for me? Yeah, me chicken curry, own recipe. Keep your strength up, eh? Rosie, thanks. Thanks a lot. Well, I thought you could do with cheering up. You were a bit upset at the dogs the other night. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, don't be. I didn't mind, love. Yeah, I know. What's your acting? Spot on. Hmm. It's great being here. You know, with you. Ta. You're dead easy to get on with. Oh, not what my Eddie would say. Your Eddie doesn't know what a lucky man he is. You're special. You what? I didn't think he wanted to know, so I took the hint and backed off. But this, this is great. So, hold on a minute, Kevin. What are you going on about? About us. About all this. Oh, my God. What is it? This isn't for you and me. It's for you and our Mel. But from what you said on the phone... Yeah, I phoned you to get you round here for our Mel. I'm sorry. I wanted to be a surprise for both of you. I never meant you to... Oh, I'm sorry. It's my fault. But... That'll be Mel. Hiya. Hiya. Well, I've uh, switched everything off downstairs. You what? Well, there's no point in wasting your lucky, is there? That's my room now. Are you serious? What about? About me staying here with you. Oh, yeah, I thought, you know. Yeah, obviously. Just another conquest day. But you've got me wrong, Barry. Well, I'd just assume that we've been... Well, assume this. Put the lights back on and fill me a cab now. I didn't want you to come and see me. I've got to talk. What about? About you and about us. I don't want to talk about us. There's nothing to say. For God's sake, Rach. Mum's worried sick about you. She wants you to come home. I'm not coming home. Never. Why are you doing this to her? Why are you making her suffer? Because she made my dad suffer. You both did. <sighs> you know that's not true. All I know is that you killed him. You killed my dad. Yeah, and you know why? 
Oh, because you hated him. No. Because of what he did to me, what he did to Mum, and what he did to you, Rachel. I've told you, he never did anything to me. I saw him in bed with you. Dad had never hurt me. He loved me. And he said he loved me. And he raped me. No. Dad would never do that. He loved us. He raped me, and then he raped you, Rachel. No. Why are you trying to protect him? Because you're lying. You hate... You hate him because of the way you are, because you're a lesbian. You hate men, and that's why you're hating my dad. It's got nothing to do with that. And that's why you want me to lie. No, Rachel. It's, it's true, isn't it? You wanted my dad dead because you're gay, and that's why I told the reporter about you. It was you. Yeah, I told him. Because I wanted everyone to know. Because I'm sick of you lying about my dad, I'm sick of you and my mum, and I never want to see either of you again. Hi. What did make us start on getting this place tidied up? Well, don't go worrying about that. We'll get sorted soon enough. Look, I feel terrible about you sleeping in the extension in your own house. Well, I'll stay in the flat if you like. Hey, you carry on here as normal and I'll come round with the rent book in the morning, Miss James. Look, I'm being serious. After everything has happened, maybe we should look for somewhere else. Look, man, you can stay here as long as you like, whether I live here or not. I want you to feel secure. I mean, that's why I bought it. It's just Rachel. When she comes home, I'm, I'm not sure how she'll take to us sleeping together. Well, like I said, I don't mind kipping in there. And you can always come down for a glass of water, can't you? Hey, I wonder if the busy's confiscated my shammies. Ah, <coughs> oh, cracker. <laughs> come on. Come on, you little devil. You come for your sausages, have you? No, not a word to Jean, remember? It's our secret. Hi. Hiya. Hi. You going out? Well, of course I am. I've got med school, haven't I? Well, shouldn't you, uh, shouldn't you stay away until after the trial? Well, don't be ridiculous. The solicitor said it could be ages, and I've got loads of work to catch up on. Yeah, but our names have been all over the papers and on the television. Well, all the more reason to get back to normal. Price of fame, eh? She's right, you know, man. You can't just bury your head and wait until the trial comes up. And you should be back at work as well. It's half term. Well, you should be back. I mean, for all you know, you could have to look for another job next week. They might not have even held your post open for you. You've got to face them, man, just like me and Beth are going to. I suppose I could uh, leave it till Monday when school's back. And, uh... No, Mum, we can't hang around anymore. We've got to show people we can cope. She's got to do it. You know what she's like. She'll just hide away forever. Yeah, well, don't worry. I'll be right behind her. Hey, listen, Beth, you don't mind me moving in, do you? It's your house. Yeah, I know all that, but, well, I mean, I'm prepared to move back to the flat if you prefer it. No, I want you here with Mum. That's what I prefer. Oh, well, that's it, then. I'll go and see Barry, and I'll give him the notice on my flat. OK, and make sure she goes to school. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Take that, babe. And good luck. Come on, last one, come on. Hey, 
cheek of that Beth Jordosh. Just waltzing out the house like nothing had happened. I don't know how they can live there. It's weird. Yeah, well, no one else to go, I suppose. Must be catching. How long did you say your Mike and his girlfriend could stay here? Yeah, look, love, I'm sorry about that. How long? Well, I didn't put a time limit on me. Oh, I wish I'd been there. I mean, two adults and another kid. We can't cope. I can't get our Josh in the bathroom for his bath. Yeah, well, it won't be for long, love. Well, what could I do? I've always said to be a home here for our Michael, and they were stuck. Yeah, we've spent weeks getting this place how we want it, and now we're being invaded. And I don't like your Mike on the couch. He's going to ruin it. OK, OK, I'll tell him. Yeah, we'll tell him now. Is it Sarah up yet? Um, she's just in the bathroom. All right, Mike. Right. Listen, son, now, you know about you sleeping on the settee, well... Actually, we'd prefer it if you didn't, you know, with it being brand new and that. OK, yeah, sorry, I'll get him with Sarah tonight, then. You what? Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? I'll just get him a day. I'm not having you sleeping together in this house. Oh, come on, Dad, we've been seeing each other for a few weeks now. Oh, a few weeks, is it now? Hey, have you heard this fella? What is it with you kids just jumping in and out of anybody's bed? Oh, come on, Dad, why not? Because she's not married to you, that's why not. She's married to the fellow over the road, isn't she? And you two aren't married. You're still married to me, Mum. Well, that's not the point. What harm is it going to do, eh? I mean, it won't be for long, will it, I? Hey, hey, don't you be siding with him. No, I'm sorry. Outside, you can do as you like, but under this roof. Come on, Meg. Let's get you a drink. OK, look, Dad. Tonight, I sleep in our Tony's room, OK? Morning. Oh, hiya, love. Have you finished with the bathroom? Yeah, thanks. Is it OK if I make her a drink or something? Oh, sure. I've got to get this little fella to nursery. Come on. Yeah. I'd better get myself down to the shop. Uh, can you mind her having a bit of crystal calls? I've left some of the clothes. Um, yeah, OK, yeah. Right. See you later, Nelly. Bye. See you later. Yeah. Are you sure they don't mind me staying here? No, you're all right. You were stuck, weren't you? They're not happy about me sleeping on the sofa, though. You always come in with us, if you want. No, your dad might not like it, eh? Mm. Sleep all right, love. Like a baby. You can't be being back in your own pick, can you? No. Is there anything in that lot from the police, love? What are you expecting? Well, I've asked them to put our back garden straight, so I thought I'd have an answer by now. Oh, sorry, nothing. <sighs> we can't leave it like this. How much longer before we're back to normal, eh? Uh, at least you haven't had to put up with them reporters hanging around. This is normal compared to the last couple of weeks. All right, Lou. Yeah. Hi, Dad. All right, son. I've just seen Beth Jordash come for the bus. Did you speak to her? And what could I say? So did you do it, then? Shh. Rachel's only upstairs. Uh, look, love, um, I don't want to be funny, like, but now that they're back in their own house, what's happening with Rachel? How long's she going to be here? She won't even talk to her mother. What can we do? We try to get them together. She refuses that. I mean, she reckons they did her. She won't have anything to do with them. Do you believe it? I can't see how they got out on bail. Murderers usually get remanded. Uh, no one's found no guilty yet, lad. You're kidding, aren't you? You don't think he was buried under there because he had a gardening fetish, do you? Remember when the kids buried that knockoff stuff in their garden last year? Beth threw a wobbler when we wanted to dig it up. And he fainted, I remember that. <laughs> They must have done it. You can't blame Rachel for not wanting to go back there, can you? I oh, know, but she's got to go somewhere. She can't stay here. I mean, what happens if they get jailed? Carl! Sarah's left someone back as clothes. They're in a carrier by the bed. I'll get them. I see the back next door. Yep. Is Rachel still here? For the moment, yeah. Hi, love. Hi, Red. Er, uh, back up with you, then. Er, uh, Mike's looking after her for me. All oh, right. Look, love, I'm sorry that to come to this. You and Becca going like, but, uh, well, you know, if there's anything I can do to help. Thanks. There you go. Ta. So, uh, have you found somewhere to stay yet? Yeah, it's only temporary, but... Give us the address so I can come and see you, Becca. It's, uh... Mr Dixon's let me stay at theirs. A number eight on the close. Well, where else could I go? I was stuck. What's all this? My new hi-fi. Here's a hand. Oh, you're splashing out a bit, aren't you? Has it got to see the end? To your right, it's got the lot. Might stop your dad playing his bad heel record, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Off round to the school. Well, I suppose I better had. Yeah, well, you go round there. 
Keep your head up, okay? Hey, look who's come out in the airport. All right, man. How are you, love? Oh. No man. Guilty written all over the face. I can't face it. Everyone's looking. Let them look. It's like your Beth said. You can't hide away in there forever. You've got to face them. We all have. This is a bit early for you lot, isn't it? Well, there's lots to do. Mick Johnson very kindly offered to give a cookery demonstration to our members. All oh, right. 100 ways to make a pizza, eh? <laughs> hey, you should have said I would have let you one of my chefs for an hour or two. Might take you up on that. Gee, I've got it. It came in the post this morning. Oh, <laughs> cracker! Bring that back. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Come on. There you go. How did Jimmy manage to con you into looking after the dog? It was more a case of the dog conning David. It really will have to go back where it belongs. Unless, of course, you could possibly look after it for a couple of weeks, Barry. You see, I've been chosen as area delegate for the National Conference of Residents Associations of Brighton. Congratulations. Brighton, Major? How wonderful. When do you go? End of the week. You know, I thought I might look up Ted Bond, seeing as I'm going to be down there for a bit. Remember he retired to Hove? Might make rather a pleasant break of it. And you do enjoy Brighton, don't you, dear? Mm, I do enjoy Brighton. What I don't relish is being your secretary for a week and then listening to you and Ted Bond swapping endless stories about national service. I quite like Brighton. I could um, come and take down your notes, Major. Thank you, Audrey, but I'm afraid the association funds only cover my own expenses. Pity. Look, David, I'm awfully busy. Why don't you just go off and enjoy yourself? Well, if you're sure you don't mind, dear, but uh, I don't want you to miss out on this trip. Good. Then that's settled. Now, perhaps you'd like to come and help us with the cookery demonstration. I'm sorry, Jean, no time. If I'm to represent the good citizens of this community, <coughs> then I must canvass their views. I want to be the voice of the man <coughs> in the street. Cracker, girl, what are you doing? P put that down, for heaven's sake. Get for goodness sake. <coughs> 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 All right. We've got 27 covers for lunch today. Have you done the menus yet? Uh, not yet. Well, you better get them done then, haven't you? Do you have to be like this? Ever since the other night and yours. What about it? Look, we still have to work together, so can't we at least be civil with each other? All right. Sorry. If you wanted to talk about I don't it... think there's anything to talk about, is there? I've got the message already, thanks. It's not like that. I just wanted to explain. Look, I've got to get back to the club. Why don't we just get on with our own jobs, eh? Active citizenship, eh? That's what it's all about, Ron. The authorities are stretched to the limit, so it's up to every man jack of us to do his bit. So, if there's anything you'd like me to raise... <laughs> How about me prices for the start, Bing? The supermarkets are killing me at the moment. Beyond the conference's remit, I'm afraid, Ron. But this is a good opportunity for you to put across any views you might have through me. Ah, now that's why they've picked you, isn't it, Bing? You're the opinion leader around here when it comes to local affairs. <laughs> that's very flattering, Ron, but... Uh... No, Bing, you know what should be said, and I am more than happy to have you go down there and represent us. After all, you are our chairman, aren't you, eh? <laughs> that's very generous of you, Ron, thank you. So, if I could just ask you to let me have yours and Beverly's subs. And I shall need next week's as well, you know, to cover my expenses. What, you mean we've got to pay to send you on holiday? You sure you need to go? Oh, how are you, love? Uh, 20 pence in the hedges. Right. Didn't know you smoked. Some matches, please. Matches. Right. Well, never known air by Siggy's before. Must be the strain. What do you say to someone on a murder charge? I know. All you want to do is ask what happened in that house, but you can't. Hey, I hope you're going to ask her for double subs and all. Andy, what are you doing with that? You gave them up ages ago. Oh, 
You don't need them. Have you been into work yet? You're doing it again, telling me what to do. You don't need them. I'm not talking about cigarettes. I mean, going into the school, my job. I walked in there and they looked at me like I was dirt. The school secretary could hardly speak to me. Well, at least you faced it. They don't want me. Suspended on full pay until I have to go to trial. Compassionate leave, they said. It was a shame to have me there. I mean, what would they tell the parents that the school dinners are being served by a murderer? Look, I shouldn't have gone. I should be trying to get my daughter back, not worrying about bloody jobs. Where are you going? For Rachel. Well, you want to see the state of my back garden? Well, how long will I have to wait till it receives attention? I wrote to you over a week ago. I haven't even received an acknowledgement. Yeah, OK, I'll wait a few more days. Bye. Oh, Mandy, hiya, love. Come on, just leave it, will you? Can I speak to Rachel? <laughs> Look, well, do you think you should? I mean, it... where is she? No, I'm sorry, love, not now. I eh? want to see her. Well, she doesn't want to see you. I'm sorry, love, but I don't think it's a good idea. Man, leave her for now, will you? Come on. <sighs> she can't talk to him in that state, so I'd take it home if I was you, mate. Yeah. Just leave it for a bit, eh, man? Oh, see what we're up against. If she sees her mum, Rachel's going to be even more upset. But if she doesn't get it sorted, we'll still be stuck with her. I don't know what to do. We're trapped. Hi. Hi. How are you? I tried to get back to you today. Uh, what happened? Well, use your imagination, Mike. People who I thought I knew completely ignored me. And people who I've got no desire to know went out of the way to ask me all sorts of questions. And then I was sent for, and it was suggested that it might be better if I took a year out. Um, I'm sorry. Well, there's no way I'm doing that. And before you ask, yes, we did do it. We had to kill him before he killed us. He was a nasty, evil, sadistic man, and I'm glad he's dead. And I want the world to know that so they can stop pointing at us and talking about us. Dress. to do. I have to talk to her. No, man. You've got to leave it. It's up to her when she comes back. I suppose she doesn't. One day at a time. Uh, your mum's upset because the school have suspended her on full pay until after the trial. Oh, God. Don't they understand that that is the worst thing they could have done? She needs to get out of this place. You know, my lecturer tried similar tactics with me. He said that it might be better if I took time off until the trial was over. I'm not trying to push you out. Well, I'm not going to let them. I'm going to go in every single day that I have to. I'm not staying at home. You shouldn't either. Don't hide away, Walt. Where are you going now? I'm going to go and get changed, and then I'm going to go and do my shift at the restaurant. Are you sure you want to? I'm positive. I am not going to let them beat me. Yeah. She's right, you know. Uh, can, can I have your attention, please? Mr. Johnson will be with us very shortly. Where is he? Oh, disaster. I'm afraid he can't make it. Oh, no. Oh. Um, attention, everyone. Um, uh, could you listen, please? I'm afraid we've got a slight technical hitch. Mr. Johnson can't be with us today, so we're going to have to forego our talk for this week. Uh. Unless uh, anybody here could possibly entertain us. How about a talk entitled Safari Through the Serengeti? If your chap let you down, I might be able to fill in. Hello, Walt. How are you? How could you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Steady on, old girl. What's going on? Uh, that's our old. Always was excitable. Uh, you're all right, Buzz. I'm going back to work in a minute. I've started me round again, you know. So, what can I do for you? Uh, I've come to give you notice on me flat. I'm going to be living in the clothes from now on. It's a pity the busy's had a housewarming, isn't it, before you got there? Yeah, well, I wasn't sure about moving in properly until it sounded out Mandy and Beth. But, uh, well, I'll move my stuff out by the end of the week if it's all right. Yeah, no probs. So, how are they? Well, Beth's fine, but Mandy's still a bit nervous about showing her face on the street. We had to twist her arm to get her to go back round to work. 
Yeah, well, it isn't easy, is it, when you're the latest gossip? Anyway, it's just gotta make sure to keep her spirits up, you know. Yeah, you do that. And listen, don't let a bit of jangling affect you, all right? I won't. Cheers, Bad. And Sinbad, don't forget your windows. Don't worry. Normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. Good. Cheers, Bad. Sit down, mate. Hi. I didn't expect to see you back here. Well, why not? <sighs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Welcome back. Thanks. Excuse me, can we see Carl for a minute? If you don't mind waiting a bit, I'll go and get him. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Fine. Fine, thanks. Audrey, will you please come out and talk to me? <laughs> Sorry, Jean. What's it all about? Why are you so upset? Oh, uh, yeah. I haven't clapped eyes on him for years and suddenly he turns up out of the blue. It was such a shock. Why rush off like that? Who is he? He was always like that. So selfish, so unpredictable. I never expected to see him again, honestly. And then suddenly there he is, bold as brass as if nothing's happened. Well, it would help if I knew who he was. He's, he's my brother. Well, then come out and talk to him. You can't expect the poor chap to just stand there wondering what's going on. Come on. No, I don't want to see him again. Tell him to go. That's silly. I'm not coming out of here until he's gone. <sighs> Look at him, flirting with Carl's wife. He's just trying to make me jealous. Mm, is it working? Huh? You're kidding, aren't you? I went out for a meal with him the other night. And we went back to his place for a coffee, except he thought it was me for afters. Well, I hope you put him on a diet. <laughs> Too right. I put him straight. And so now he's giving me a hard time. Why do you like him? Yeah. I suppose I do. Oh, here he is now. I'll see you then, sweetheart. Yeah. Ta -da. Ta -da. See ya. Hiya. What are you doing coming into work? I see you coming back to work. She said anything about the murder? Keep your voice down, will you? Well, where's she though? Not for me, no. So what do you want? I'm broke. I've asked Mick for some more hours over the weekend, but I need some money now. Couldn't you borrow off your new mate? It's for Becca, not me. She's your daughter, not Mick's. How do you think I feel you living next door with your lover? Carl, it's not me lover. It's separate bedrooms. Oh, yeah, pull the other one. My right, Baz, all done. Nice one, Sent. Yeah, I was just going to post that in your letterbox. Casey Rogers fetched it down. Casey Rogers? Yeah, it's for Terry Sullivan, but, uh, well, they didn't have an address to send it on to him. It's posted from Florida. I didn't know he knew anyone in America. He doesn't. Hang on, what are you doing? Well, look, there's all mad kinds of cults and everything in America, isn't he? I can't afford this to get through, so it might upset him again. So, well, it's good news. It's Stephen. She's taking him to Florida. He's gone there with her. Who? My son. The one I had with Fran. Oh, God, I'd forgotten all about her. She's taking him halfway around a flaming world and I didn't even know anything about it. Now! Oh. I want you to stand there and keep them shut. Come on, Bev. <laughs> What's that? What do you think? How much did it cost? Oh, never mind that. Got it on the drip from Mo's catalogue. She's not cost me next to nothing paying for it each week. Well, she's gonna say that, isn't she? How do you switch the bloody thing off? Oh, come here. With this. Hey, it's brill, isn't it? Everyone's got one. It's the latest thing. Where's my music centre? Oh, it's upstairs. Thought we might get a few bob for it. And your old records, if we're lucky. <laughs> what, my LPs? <laughs> I want them back down here. If I'm forking out for a record player, I want to play my stuff and all. You can't play LPs on a CD player, Dad. Why not? It's not one of them cartridge thingies, is it? <sighs> They'll never catch on. Plays these. Oh, I see. So now we've got to fork out for CDs all the time, have we? This is just a conspiracy to get you to buy all your old records at ten times the price. I didn't know you were a vinyl junkie, Dad. Now, I want you to get to the garage, get the toolbox, and get these up. I haven't had my tea yet. Well, I'll start your tea when Sarah's finished in the kitchen. What's that smell? Eh, uh, I'm just making some mince for me and Mike. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, but we don't eat meat in this house. We're vegetarian. Sorry, I forgot to say. Oh. Come on, Bev, you can let it off just this once, can't you? If they're staying with us, they can fit in with us. 
That's not going to do any harm, is it? No, I mean it, Mike. No meat in this house. Now, you get those up and I'll get those nut cutlets on the go. Aye, aye, the worker's back. Aye, aye. There's a letter there for you. All right. Where's Mum? I told her to go and have a good soak in the bath, give her a bit of peace and quiet. How's everything at work? Fine. God. What's up? We're trying our best to get back to normal and then some creep has to send filth like that. Oh, this is sick. Well, we can't tell Mummy to finish her. Next tonight, Adrian Dunbar stars as a showbiz entrepreneur badly in need of a hit who hopes to find it by booking exiled 50s singing star Joseph Locke. The comedy drama Hear My Song is the film on four next. usual rubbish, nothing for you. Why, are you expecting something? No, I sent off for a book list, that's all. I wondering if I'd come. How's college? Well, all right. If you don't mind constant whispers behind your backs and stupid remarks off people who are supposed to be intelligent. Look, why don't you try and work from home? No, Mum, I'm not giving in. And neither should you. I'm all right. No, you're not. Ever since you've been suspended, you've just been staying here like a frightened rabbit. You should be out. Well, where can I go? Well, just be normal. Go to the shops or the library like you used to. Anything. Just make an effort. Oh, well, maybe when Rachel comes home. Have you seen her today? Well, she went out this morning with Lee. She saw me standing at the window, but just turned away. What must people think? We're back here and she's still next door. I don't know what to do about her. Well, you know how stubborn she can be. Just have to wait for her to change her mind. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, couldn't do me a favour, could you? What? Nip to Mr Dixon's and get me some more flour. I've just run out. Well, why can't you go? Well, I don't know. I don't want to. Well, you'll have to, won't you? Cos I'm not. In fact, me and Simbad are doing no more shopping. So, we'll just have to starve, won't we? Oh, Michael. Yes. Look, this might interest you. A day at the races with the over 55s. <laughs> no, not for me, thanks, Mr Crosby. <laughs> I rather wish I could go myself, but duty calls. I shall be attending the National Residents Association Conference in Brighton. Mm. Oh, maybe there's something you'd like me to bring up on your behalf. I'm very keen to hear young people's thoughts. Uh, Just pop in with any suggestions. It's important that I represent all my constituents, so to speak. Anyway, thanks a lot. There we go. Yeah, thanks. So, bye for now. See, See you. See you later. <laughs> well... I don't know, he's off his head. Listen, are you knocking off now? Yeah, why? Well, can I scrap a coffee and watch some telly at yours? Well, why aren't you working? I've got a day off in Lou. Do you want me to do some shoot on Sunday, you know, a training video for shop workers? Yeah, well, I'm sure there's plenty of coffee and a telly at me dad's. Yeah, but I don't get hassled by a kid at yours, do I? Well, I thought little Josh was in nursery. Well, he is. But say as Rebecca isn't. Oh, yeah, and what's she doing there? Well, you wouldn't let them stay at the flat, would you? And they were desperate, sort of kicking at me dad's for a bit. Oh, aye, and what's Bev got to say about all this, eh? Bringing some married woman with a kid to lodge a Casa Bevron's? Well, she's not exactly over the moon, like. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. Look, it's no big deal between me and Sarah. We've just been out a few times and she's keeping at me dad's. It's just, she's getting a bit too keen, that's all. 
Yeah, well, at least she won't con you like that Beth Jaws Ash did. If you mean because she's gay, she didn't con me. I knew for ages she was like that, and my mate's OK. So, did she do it then? How should I know, Jackie? Oh, go on, tell us. Did she do it? She's not going to talk to me about things like that, is she? Mm, not unless you're a girl, I suppose. Or some other lesbo. Jackie, don't be like that. Well, I don't like her. Especially after what she did to you. Well, why don't you try and find someone... someone a bit normal for a change? I wish I could. I just feel trapped. Hey, excuse me. You never told me how Beth got on yesterday. I didn't think we were speaking. I don't remember deciding anything like that. I must have got it wrong then. Beth was fine. Right. But uh, I know she's gone through a lot at the moment. I don't want to get in any stick from anyone here. You've been really good to her and her mum, haven't you? Well, I let them stop a couple of nights at my place. Kept the job open for her. No big deal, really. Not everybody would have done that then. I thought it was really nice of you. Oh, well, I'm glad I can get some things right. <sighs> Look, it was a mess the other night. And, well, I wondered if you wanted to give it another try. Going out, I mean. Will you come out for a meal with me tonight? You're asking me out? But I thought you didn't want to know me. <laughs> I think you and me have got different ideas on how to get to know someone. Yeah, well, I uh, must have got things wrong, eh? Misread the signs. I'm sorry. I wouldn't mind getting to know you better, Barry. So, um, should we make a fresh start then? Yeah, why not? I don't think this is a good idea, love. Mum, go on. You've got to get out of the house. Oh, hiya. Yeah. Hello. Hey, hang on, man. Um. I, uh, don't suppose you've had any more thoughts on, um, what to do about Rachel? Well, uh... Beth! Uh, look, I'm not being furry on anything, but, um, thing is, now Eddie's back and that, we can't have him much longer. Well, I know, but if you were down the other day, she wouldn't even speak to me. Well, do you think you could try and talk to her again, look? Look, she's much quieter now. I think I'd get an even worse reaction than Mum. No, I'm gonna go back in, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to no, upset her. not you. I was trying to get her out to face people. She was just gonna go to the shops. Oh, I'm really sorry, love. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, but the thing is, we still need to do something about your Rachel. I know we do, and Mum's really embarrassed about the situation. But do you think it'd be OK if she stayed for another few days? Please. <sighs> All right, I suppose so. Oh, thanks. It's a shame you're going to be missing this day out of the race, isn't it, eh? Quite, but duty calls. Yeah. Why don't you and Beverly come? Do you know what, Jean? I think we will. Yeah, go on, love, put us down. It's been ages since I had a good day out with the Gigi's. Here's you're going to be top hat and tails like it was in that My Fair Lady. Oh, <laughs> hello. Oh, hiya. Ron, um, I think I'd better get on with these posters. We'll, uh, we'll see you later. Yeah. All right, Bill, turn up. Hey. Hello. 20 silk up, please. Right, sir. Uh... Isn't that that girl from the uh, papers, from that murder stuff? Uh, yeah, uh, will it be all? Thanks. It's hard to imagine her doing it. Yeah. I'm not deaf, you know, I've got ears. For anything else you want to know? I'm sorry, I was just... What? Wondering how we did it? Wondering if the papers were right, they were murdering lesbians? They steady on, love. No, I'm Didn't... sick to death of people talking about me and Mum behind our backs. Look, I'm sorry, you've got me wrong. I've got friends on Brookside Close. I saw that mob of reporters. I've got no time for them myself. I don't care what you think. Just keep out of my business, all right? Honest, I didn't mean any harm. I'm sorry. There was no need to kick off like that, you know. That fellow was harmless. I think he's a mate of the Banks's. Look, don't let them get to you, eh? Well, I'm sorry, Mr Dixon. I'll leave the flower. Yeah, well, I'd just as soon that you didn't come in here anymore if you're going to act like that. You're putting the customers off. Well, it won't happen again. Look, do you want to go for a walk or something, Beth? No. It's all right. See you. 
I'd stay away from that one if I were you, son. She's a mate. <laughs> Do you want to be knocking around with one of them? Oh, and what's that? A lesbian or a murderer? Yeah, well, take your pick, but it's a fact. You're as bad as she is. As bad as the people she's kicking off about. Oh, Kevin. Hi. Is Mo here? H who? Not here, no. Uh, can I come in and wait for a bit? See if she shows up? Maybe a quick of coffee or uh, something. I've got to get back to work in a minute. I'm sorry. Right, well, i better get off. See ya. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Stupid circular, probably. Something we can't afford. Shall I throw it in the bin? Don't be silly. Let me see. There's no stamp. I can do it from. What is that? Um, nothing. It's, it's just rubbish. It's a poison pen letter, isn't it? Hate mail. How do you know? Because I got one yesterday. I recognise the writing. Oh, God. Who's sending them? Why are they doing this to us? Mrs. Crosby. Oh, hello, Mr. Uh... No formalities, please. Call me George. All my friends do. In that case, you must call me Jean. Uh, well, hello, Jean. Look, uh, I hope this isn't inconvenient, but I just wanted to call round to apologise. That's no, fine. Well, for the rumpus at your meeting yesterday. It was all my fault walking in like that and shocking Audrey. If I'd known she was going to react like that, I'd have written first. So I'm. Um, very sorry for any embarrassment I caused you and your club members. Well, as long as Audrey's all right. I haven't spoken to her since. I had hoped to stay at her place, but uh, she refused to open the door or answer the phone. So I've had to make camp at a local hostelry. What a shame after coming so far. Well, it's hardly roughing it compared to some of the places I slept out in the bush. Right, well, I... Better be off it. Toodaloo. Well, well, why don't you stay and have a coffee? I, I was just going to make one for myself. Well, that's very generous of you, Jean, but... You really don't have to. I mean, after all, you hardly know me from Adam. Audrey's a close friend, and you are family, aren't you? Oh, that's right, I am. And I suppose that qualifies us as friends. Well, well, lead on, Jean. Lead on. So, this is your business, is it? She's drifted off. Very tired. Mm -hmm. Any luck with the nursery? Yeah, same problem as last time. It's not entirely suitable for a baby like Alice. But you've got to keep looking. Oh, definitely. Haven't given up yet. No, there's a place just by Nosley we're going to tomorrow. Emma, do us a favour, will you? Make Max a petition and a cup of coffee. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, Max, uh, I better get going and do a bit. But are you busy tonight at all? No, why? Well, it's just that uh, I want to go out, you know. Oh, well, that's no problem. Emma and I can hold the fort. Yeah, but it's a uh, nice off as well. Oh. Well, I'm sure Max can manage. Of course, of course. Uh, going anywhere special? No, just down for a meal, you know. So you will be all right without us? Uh, yes, uh, fine, thank you. Of course, of course. Right. I'll uh, see you later, then. Um, just let me know if you want anything else. Thanks. I knew it. I knew it. Going out together, it's back on between the two of them. Good. She's a nice girl. I think they're right for each other. What? Well, Barry needs a relationship to settle him down a bit. You know how restless he gets. And when he's restless, that's when there's trouble. Anyway, he's got other things on his mind. It means you can exert yourself more here a bit. But with one of the employees, it's bound to end in tears. Mm, Barry always seems to pick the wrong girl. Maybe Emma's the right girl for him. She certainly seems a sensible sort. Maybe she'll calm him down, keep him out of mischief. Anyway, you can make a start by encouraging him to bring her to this brewery dinner dance thing. And me? Well, he's your partner. I'll leave it to you. Quite fancy the idea of a bit of old-fashioned matchmaking, especially if it makes our lives easier. We should take them to the police. No, Mum. Surely we should report them. Look, there's nothing they can do. They're anonymous letters from a sick person who needs treatment. 
I don't know what's in their minds. You being gay, why should that make me kill my husband? They probably scan the papers every single day just to find someone they can send them to. Oh, Beth, I'm frightened. Try not to be scared. By now, they've probably found someone else to target. Just don't worry. But you say both letters were definitely from the same person? Well, I think they were. I mean, the colour of ink was the same and the handwriting looked similar. One from Manchester yesterday, one through the letterbox today. It's like they're getting closer. I mean, what if it's someone round here? What if they get in the house? Just try and stay calm. They wouldn't do that. How do you know? We don't know who it is, but they know who we are. I mean, they could be watching us, waiting. Don't think like that. I can't help it. It's just not knowing who they are. It frightens me. A table for tonight at eight o'clock. Is it still okay with you? Yeah, please. Put me photo on your desk, are you? What? No, I'm just uh, sorting the frame out, you know. Who is it? It's uh, my son, Stephen. Oh? You never said. <sighs> yeah, well, there's no need. I hardly ever see him. His mother doesn't want to know me. All right. So, where do they live? They used to live in Greece. They moved to Florida now. I've only just found out. That's why I've been getting these. What is it, holiday brochures? No. Houses and apartments for sale over there. I've got a bit of money to invest, so I thought it'd be good for holidays as well. Mm. So you can visit them, you mean? Well, I don't think there's much chance of that. His mother can't stand me. I don't even know the address over there. As far as she's concerned, I'll never see Stephen again. Well, so why are you thinking of buying a house over there? I don't know. Just to be near him, I suppose. You must go to Africa someday. Everything about it, oh, so much larger than life. Dawn on the savannah, shimmering heat on the game reserves in the middle of the day. And the sunsets, oh, gee, the sunsets are just breathtaking. And the stars, gazing up at the Southern Cross while the Chicago's chirrup away through the night, and the lions cough out in the thorn brush. What exactly is it that you do out there? Property, travel business. Basically, I'm trying to open up some of the more untouched parts of Kenya to tourism. I've done quite well, actually. You've never been back in all this time to see Audrey? Uh, well, we had a bit of a family disagreement. And we fell out, drifted apart. Anyway, I must have overstayed my welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the coffee. Ron's managed to get my phone for me, dear. So, no problem on the shaving front. Mr. Crosby, I presume? Yes. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, this is the gentleman I was telling you about that came in to see us at the club yesterday. George, this is my husband, David. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Oh, yes, yes. One can see that you and Audrey are related. Yes, you must be her elder brother. What? No doubt about the family resemblance, is there, dear? I'm sorry, but I think you've got things wrong. I am related to Audrey, but I'm not her brother. I'm her husband. B but you can't be. Oh, uh... we, we were under the impression that you were dead. Good Lord. Well, it looks like reports on my death are much exaggerated. How did you manage that? Simple, uh, Thank you so much. I don't know why she has to play it that loud anyway. <sighs> so it's Beth, is it? Come on, you don't think I'd splash out over 300 notes or something that won't even play proper records, do you? Mind you've got to keep them happy, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you could keep it down just a little bit in the future. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, mate, I'll have a word. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Maxie, have you got one of these CD things, have you? Yes. We've had one for years, Rob. Oh, that'll be one of them old fashioned ones, and they obsolete like. Only our mate reckons that hi-fi stuff can be out of date inside 12 months. Hey, listen, maybe we could swap CDs sometime. That's if ours will work on that old machine of yours, like. Good night. Good night. 
<laughs> Not jealous, are we, Maxie? Kevin, what do you want? Um, I've already told you, Mo's not here. Look, can I come in? I won't keep you long. Yeah, all right, well, just for a minute. Eddie's only nipped down for a pint. I wanted to have a word with you before, but I lost my nerve. What about? Last week, I was stupid. I want to apologise for, well, getting carried away. I was crazy to think I ever stood the chance. Let's just pretend it never happened, eh? You don't think any the worse of me, then? I wouldn't want us not to be friends. Well, you're going out with our mail. We're bound to be friends, aren't we? Yeah. You've really clicked there, you know. She thinks the world of you. I'm Kevin this, Kevin that. And she's more your age than me. Bring yourself down, Rosie. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm no spring chicken. Be 40 next week. I oh, never said you had a birthday coming up. You having a do? Uh, might have a nice out with Eddie. Look, um, I'm not being funny like, but I wouldn't want Eddie getting the wrong idea. I think you best get off, eh? Right. I'm a forgiven then. Never happened. Night. Nice. Nice. Don't you think it's a joke? I mean, here am I. I've got my own business, a so-called professional, and our cleaner's got a better hi-fi than we have. I can't see the problem myself. I didn't even know how to turn it on and off, but he certainly made sure he told me how much it cost. <laughs> I mean, God knows what she must think when she comes around to dust this thing. Oh, don't be so pathetic. Well, it gets to me. Well, perhaps we should update ours, then. Oh, no, no, no. No, I don't want to get into some sort of keep up with the crumpets campaign. Well, nor do I, but I listen to a lot of music these days. Perhaps we should update it. I mean, that one was only cheap. Maybe we should treat ourselves. Well, actually, um, talking about treats, I uh, forgot to tell you, I picked this up at the weekend. There we are. TVs? Mm -hmm. We've got a TV. Yeah, I know, but not like these beauties. See, look, wide screen. It's like being in the cinema. Why don't we buy one? No. Why not? Well, the price, for a start. Well, I think we can afford it. I mean, we can afford it. And you did say we should treat ourselves. Yeah, it's not just the money, Max. I, I don't want us forking out well over a thousand pounds on a TV set that's going to take over the room. I mean, we both decided that when we got the portable, remember? Well, I know, but the picture quality on that's pathetic. Oh, it's good enough. And if we had a huge screen like that, it would dominate our lives. Or, more important, it would dominate Thomas and Alice's lives. Oh, I'd prefer a hi-fi. Yeah, but you'd hardly use the thing. I would. You're not here all day. And I don't want the living room turned into some sort of multiplex. We'll get a new hi-fi. No, no way. Look, why shouldn't I have a say? I mean, I'm the one that's paying for it. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much for reminding me that I'm not bringing money into the house Sorry, anymore. I didn't mean it like that. What I meant was... No, let me finish, Max. If you're going to be like that, then I'm going to have to give up being a housewife. Look, look, I didn't mean to say it like that. Though. It's obviously not working, Max. Perhaps I should be back at work. Bye. You haven't changed your mind about going out with me? No. But I thought you might have gone off the idea. Me? Why? That's what I told you before, about Stephen and everything. I thought it might have, well, scared you off. Why should he? At least you still care for him. How old is he? Be three in October. Did you meet his mum on holiday? Eh? Well, you said she lived in Greece. No, that's where they got off to. We were never married or anything like not even living together. It was just a thing that lasted a couple of months, you know. Look, I shouldn't have told you. Sorry I landed all this on you. No, I'm glad you did. I've seen a different side to you. And I like it. I like it a lot.
So you're not going to do it, Una, then? You're not going to get rid of me that easily. real holiday next tonight with Gabby Roslin in the first of a brand new series that shows what really happens on holiday. Tonight a tropical nightmare in Guadeloupe, a holiday camp in Great Yarmouth and sex and the singles market. That's all in a couple of minutes. Soft. I mean, it is your mum you're talking about. They killed my dad. They kept telling me lies for ages and he was out there in the back garden all the time. I haven't even got a grave to go and put flowers on. I don't even know where he is. I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean to upset you. There's workmen just filling in when my dad was and them two don't even care. Workmen? Have they been around here at all? No. Look, Rich, do you think you should be watching them? When you go in the front room, mate, love. Excuse me, mate. Oh, mind if she didn't keep playing the same track? Well, perhaps you should take Ron Dixon up on his offer. Swap <laughs> CDs. Yes, well, mm. they'd be ready for a bit of light classical by now. Right, better get to work. So, what are we going to do about the nursery, then? <sighs> are we going to wait till Monday to let them know? Are you happy with it? You're not, are you? Well, it seems a bit expensive for two days a week. Don't you want to look round a bit more? No, Max, we've looked enough and I like this one. I mean, just the fact they've got two other Downs babies is good enough for me. All right, well, I'll give them a ring from the office. Listen, can you remember to pick up my dinner suit from the dry cleaners? Yeah, will do. Oh, did you ask Barry about coming to the brewery, do? I'm sorry, I, I didn't have a chance. Oh, Max. That's not that important, surely. I thought we'd agreed to make sure that this relationship with Emma worked. All right, well, if you say so. <coughs> Better get to work. Don't forget my suit. No, I won't. I'll get it on my way into town. Thought I'd look at some hi fis Oh, no, not that again. Why not? I mean, what's wrong with me having a new hi-fi? I don't want to get into another argument. I'm sorry about all that stuff about money. I, I realise now I shouldn't have said it. Max, you don't know what it's like not having your own money. Look, well, you've got money. I'll joint accounts. Yeah, but you're the only one who pays into it. I want my independence, Max. Anyway, I'm going to have a look, whatever happens. Barry, come on. Hi, Max. Sorry to bother you on that. I was just wondering if you're still going to the brewery do tonight. Yeah. Well, I was thinking of going myself, you know, it's about time I took him up on one of their offers. So, are you going to um, bring a guest? Well, I was thinking about asking Emma, actually. Well, that'll be nice. Won't it, Max? Yes, yeah, more the merrier. Right, look forward to a good night out, then, eh? Hey, we'll love to see you, Gary. You can get off now, Gary. You can get home and take care of your mummy. I told her it might be a bit late. I was wondering if you needed me to work tonight. <laughs> What's brought this on? You wanted to work on a Friday night? Some of the lads from the footy club are going on a night out tomorrow. I need a few quid. Oh, look, I'm sorry, son. You see, Sarah wants an extra hour, so she's doing tonight. Can you lend us ten quid? Please, mate. Oh, I'm sorry, Gary, I can't. <sighs> you see, that's what your dad got wrong. Just doling money out to you. If you want money, you've got to earn it, son. I'll work if you let me. I don't need you, Gary. I'm sorry, mate. Not just this once. Look, I know you're a big help here. But, you know, you should be making an effort to look for full-time work, something with a future. I've 
tried. Yeah, but not hard enough, eh? All right, Eddie. All right, Mick. Can you do us a say, uh, large Alcatraz, please? I'll Mick? do it. Be about ten minutes. He's keen. This thing's just. So, how's it going next door to you, Ed? All them reports is gone. Just about, thank God. The police sent a gang of workies to tidy up the Jordash's back garden, but they've conveniently forgotten, man. The place is in a right mess. It wasn't as if they found anything on our side. Well, didn't you ask them to get your street? I've written. I phoned. It's like banging me head against a brick wall. It'll take me and our car a month of Sundays to get it sorted. Yeah. Listen, um, could you use a bit of extra labour? Oh, you've uh, volunteered now? <laughs> no, not me, Eddie, but uh, Gary uh, wants to earn a tenner and fast. He's finished his shift now. Well, it'll be hard work, lad. Trench is the back fill that. I'll have a go. Yeah, well. Yeah, all right, why not? You're on. It's all love. Oh. Is it okay if we get off now, Ron? Me, here, appointments course are past. You know? Yeah, go on, off you go. I'll be okay. Oh, so. You seem to be doing a lot of gallivanting these days. Who am I to complain if that husband of mine's decided to start taking me out a bit more, eh? Yeah, and so he should. About time he got his act together. <laughs> See you, Ron. Hello. Hi, Hi Mike. Hello. Dad, can you do us a favour? If it's got anything to do with money, no. I've got a brand new music centre to pay for. Hi, fi Dad. And anyway, it's got nothing to do with money. It's just this guy from work's asked me to go to a do tonight, but Sarah's working. Oh, I see. You want me to go with you, do you? No. I just wonder whether you'd babysit Becca. Oh, no way, Michael. Sorry. Oh, Dad. Michael, why should I look after her? She's nothing to do with us. Now, you'll have to sort that out with your girlfriend. But Sarah's working. She needs the dosh. Well, she'll have to see that fellow of hers, then, won't she? After all, it's his little girl. Yeah, but Carl works nights at Grancy's restaurant, doesn't he? Well, why can't his mum and dad have her, then? Oh, she can't ask them. No, she was the one who bombed her out. Yeah, well, don't look at me. Anyway, it's Friday night. I go down the Legion with Bev. Dad, there's going to be people at this do I should meet. It's going to be a big chance for me. Could be good for me career. Michael, watch me lips, son. No. I don't see why I should give up my evening out to look after somebody else's kid. Excuse me, Eddie. I'm sorry to bother you, but... Uh... Do you think you could give these to Rachel? It's just a few clean clothes. I don't want Rosie having to do all the washing. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell her. Um, <sighs> look, Mandy, uh, me and Rosie know it's been a fear and everything, but, but isn't there anything you can do about Rachel? We were pleased to help out and that, but, well, to tell you the truth, we just want to get back to normal. Yeah, well, Beth and I don't know what to do. You know what happens when we try and speak to her. Well, do you want to come round and try talking to her again? She won't listen to me. But what about Gary? He's one of her friends. Do you think he could talk to her? I don't know. Shall I ask him? Yeah, if you don't mind. I'll try anything, love. Emma? Hmm? What are you doing tonight? Working, surprise, surprise. Well, how about if me and Max could fix it that you'd had another night off? What are you on about? Well, uh, you took me out last night, so I thought I'd return the compliment tonight. And wouldn't Max mind me having another night off? Would he be going out with Max and me and Patricia? All four of us, why? Well, don't you want to go on, no? It'll be a Cheshire hotel, be dancing, free bar and that. Well, yeah, but... Well, Max, I was just explaining to Emma about this uh, brewery thing. Should be good, shouldn't it? Well, I don't know. I've never actually been to one. Well, Max and Patricia want you to come anyway. Thanks, Max. I'd love to come. I'm not stupid, Gary. I saw you talking to my mum. She knows we're friends, so she thought she'd ask you to come and get me home. Yeah, but why don't you? It's my first day in a Banksy's house when you know you've got somewhere next door. I'm not going back there. That's where they killed my dad. So is it true what was on the telly, then? Of course it's true. Look, I don't want to go back to that house ever. I don't want to be with my mum or Beth. And I'd sooner go in a home than go back there, and you can tell her that. No good, Mr. Banks. She doesn't want to know. What she say? I'm sorry. It didn't work. She doesn't want to come home. Well, what else did she say? I don't like saying. I, I think you can tell us some. She um. She said she'd sooner go on her own than go back next door. 
I'm sorry. I didn't really want to ask her. I'm sorry, Mandy, but she can't stay here much longer. Do you know the trouble you're causing? You've got to come home. You're making a fool out of me. Do you hear? Rachel? to eat all day. I've been too busy dashing around getting ready. Yeah, it's a nice dress. Isn't it, Barry? Yeah, it's really nice. You don't look so bad yourself. Uh, no, according to reception, Patricia and I have already arrived. Well, maybe it's a cock-up with the old sound, you know. Mm. Should we get a drink, then? Yeah, it's through there, I think. Right. Glad you came. I think they make a lovely couple. Well, if you say so, darling. Don't be so stuffy. Look how happy he seems. So the fella says, can you help me? And the doctor says, oh, yeah, I can help you. But I'll have to report you to the RSPCA. <laughs> ah. No, cheers, you're a gent. Scotch, large one. Brandy and baby shampoo, Jackie. Oh, thanks, no. All right, how are you? All right. Enjoying yourself, kid? Oh, are you sure we can afford to stay here overnight? Don't I tell you, brewery's paying for the room. Oh, straight up. Kid, everything's free. Fill your boots. <laughs> to see what our room looks like. Yeah, but plenty of time for that, isn't it? Listen, tell you what, let's get another one down our necks, then find out where we're sitting for the scram. Should be a classy bit of nose bag here, kid. Oh, thanks, love. Oh, no, love you are a gent, a gent and a half. Love, cheers. 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 <laughs> Go on. Rebecca, where are you going? You haven't finished your tea. Just sit down. You promised your mum you'd eat all your tea. Now, be a good girl and eat it. Come on, mate, eat something, will you? Hello, Josh. You having a good dinner? You won't eat a thing. Bev! It's no good shouting there, she's gone out. I mean, gone out, where's she gone? She's gone out with a mate of hers, Janice. Some vegetarian meal and into town, some club, and the tea's in the oven. Oh, that's great, isn't it? She knows damn well that Friday night's Legion night. Well, she said you can go tomorrow. Oh, did she? Well, she needn't bother, cos I'm still going. No, hang on a minute, who's gonna mind Josh? Well, you're here, aren't you, a service little girl? No way, Josh is your responsibility. I've got to mind her, haven't I? Oh, God almighty, what did you do that for? It's naughty. All right, Michael, don't be shouting at him. No wonder he's upset to be treating him like that. Well, I'm doing my best, aren't I? I'm already done with it. I shouldn't have to cope with the two of them. And I don't want you disappearing down the Legion and leaving me here. All right, all right, fair enough. Well, it looks like we're both in for an exciting Friday night, then, doesn't it? Yeah. OK, you sort out Becca, and I'll deal with Fallon, my lad, here. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> so what you let yourself in for? Oh, Michael, no wonder he's crabby, his nappy's soaking. I shouldn't have to put up with all this kind of hassle on a Friday night. Rebecca, will you go in there and watch some telly, eh? Is this where we're sitting? All to ourselves, by the look of it, kid. Oh, we? We're not on our own, are, are we? Oh, I'm worrying about that. All the more ale for us, kid. Would madam like uh, that or what? <laughs> I was wondering whether to ask Barry and Emma out with us next week. What for? Well, we did decide to do a spot of matchmaking, didn't we? Well, I thought maybe that day at the races that Mum's organising. Mind you, I didn't really fancy getting on a coach with a whole gang of oldsters. Well, there's no need. I forgot to tell you yesterday I got some free tickets for the same meeting. Oh, really? Yeah. Admission to the hospitality suite, the full works. All gratis paid for by the wine merchants that we deal with. Oh, that's brilliant. Right, shall we find out where we're sitting? Yeah. Oh, well, at least they've laid a table for us. Max, stop complaining. Cream of asparagus soup, followed by pan flag pheasants in port wine sauce. That sounds good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, why are you, Barry? Jimmy never said you would come. Boss, Jimmy never told me he was coming either, did you, Jim? <laughs> Well, the pair of yous, you never come on these twos, do you? So I thought, you know, well, why waste a good night out now? Have you booked a room in my name? You what? This isn't funny. You booked a room in my name, didn't you? 
this true, Jimmy? Invites come and they never get used. I just thought, you Is know... Is that what happened when we went to that new place in St. Helens last month? Well, I, you know... And that new wine bar in Wallasey the other week? They'd have gone to waste otherwise. You lying get, Jimmy Corkill. You told me the brewery had invited you personally. Perhaps we could all sit down. But he's fraudulently booked a room in our names. The brewery's supposed to be paying for that. What about us? Look, why don't we all just sit down? I could kill you for this. What about our meal? It's all right. I'll make sure we'll all eat. But as for your free B room, Jimmy, it's either pay up or get a cab home. I'm no worries, boss. I'm gonna cab. Oh, no, you won't. You'll pay for the room you promised me. You what? I've cost a bomb there. You're paying. I'm sorry about this, Barry. He promised me an expensive night nice house. Well, it is going to be expensive, isn't it? And don't forget, it's a charity do. We'll expect you to put your hand in your pocket, Jimmy. Oh, well done. And there, uh, how's the back? Oh, it's a bit <laughs> stiff. It's a slave driver, Banksy's dad. Ah, but isn't it better earning it though rather than scabbing it off somebody? Ah, I suppose so, yeah. Well, I reckon you'll be ready for this, won't you? Oh, it's all right, Mick. I'll grab something at home. Look, I phoned you, Ma. I told you you'd be staying for tea. Oh, come on, get that down your neck. Ta. <laughs> so, what are you going to do now? I mean, you can't do it in a bank's garden forever. How about a job? I'll find something. Yeah, and how many days a week to go down the job centre? Well... Or look at the job adverts in the paper. <sighs> There's never anything for me. Guessing you spent a lot of time with my family, so I'm not concerned about you. I mean, I don't want you going off the rails like you're our fella. I don't go robbing anymore, though, and that's the truth. Yeah, I believe that. But what about the next time when you're short of a few, Bobby? Maybe there won't be someone like Eddie Banks with an instant little job for you, and that's when you start to get tempted. I was thinking about trying to get a job on a scheme or something. But that's a start. Yeah, but I don't want to be knocking me pan out doing something that boring. Yeah, well, keep looking. Try the job centres, try the papers, I'll help you, you know. I just feel as if it's so useless, though. Yeah, I know what you mean, son. Just promise me one thing, eh? If you ever need any help, anything at all, don't go off doing something stupid. Come to me first, eh? I'll be here for you. Yourself. Oh, sorry. Anybody else want a little top up? I'll have some, please. Right. <sighs> Just give us a shout if you want any more. I don't know, do you want a little bottle? Oh, here comes the raffle. Hey, do you want to go? Please. Don't you be making a show of me, Paul. You get your Wallace out soon. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I'm going with it. Anyway. Well, it's simple. All you do is sign your name on a tenner and then put it in the bag. Tenner? They'll have an hundred goes for a tenner down at the Labour Club, mate. Shame we couldn't have gate crashed there. Oh, go on. I want to go as well. Aye, aye. So what you do, you take a tenner, do you? And then you just put your name on the bag. Is that right? Yeah. Never let it be said. I don't pay me way. Uh, could I have my pen? Oh, good a what? Oh, I love a good band, don't you? If you could just wait a moment, please. If, look, if I could have my pen. Do you know, I could just do with the dance. Pissy is useless. Says who, you? Uh, the pen. I'm sorry, love, we are. Oh, bloody hell! Oh. oh, I'm sorry, love. Let me wipe you, for you. Look, it's all right, look. You've done enough damage as it is. Look, I'll see to it myself. I'm sorry. Just soak it in some salt, you know, before you wash it. That'll get us out. Shall we have a dance? What's this? Yeah, come on. I'll show you. Kid. Let's show the boss how it should be done, eh? Are you getting off pass? Uh, perhaps later. Bloody cheek! That's it, relax. What, like this? Yeah. I'm not gonna break, you know. Put your arm around me back. That's better. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, uh, no way! Oh, Jimmy, it. be careful! You're gonna lie to me tight! Well, it's not my fault. Stop leaning on me. Leaning on me. I like, said I'll pick it up tomorrow. Oh, 
How much? Well, not bad, actually. I'm just over 400. God almighty, what do you think we're made of money? Well, it's on interest-free credit. But I've just committed us to another 90 pounds a month for that nursery. We'll, we'll have to cancel it. No, Max. Anyway, I signed the agreement. Well, then break it. No, I'm going to keep it. Well, don't see what's wrong with that. Because we can't afford it. We'll manage. We'll... You mean I'll manage? I'm the one that's paying for it. Oh, you pay. I'll pay for it, then. How? It's become a point of principle now, Max. I'll pay for it if it kills me. Chill, my mate. You are a pal. Oh, hey, boss. It's that movie you've got there, haven't you? Hey, you don't want to be wasting your free hotel movie. Thanks for your advice, Timmy. No, listen, get in there. Get in there. She's mad on you. All over you like a rash. Yeah. Hey, listen, before you go, I've got a little job for you. All oh, right. A bottle of champagne delivered to my room, please. Nice one, nice one. Yeah. Cash. Well, you've got two choices, do you? You pay for it now, or I'll dock it out your wages. Call it a little bit of compensation for making a show of my mates, all right? Bam. From the end of September to the beginning of April. You could, of course, go in the summer months. This is doing me, Edin. Missing your mummy, aren't you, love, eh? What am I going to do, eh? Read another story? Oh, that's useless. Do you want to have a go getting her to sleep? I told you before, son. Not my problem. Have you tried giving her a cuddle? Well, me? Listen, lad. If you intend to stay with this Sarah one, you know, get serious, then you're going to have to accept that things aren't going to be easy. You and her can't come first. You're going to have to consider the kitty like it was your own. It's not that easy, though, is it? No. <laughs> well, I should know, shouldn't I, with our little Josh? Mind you, I wouldn't swap them for a bun loaf. <laughs> but Dad, I'm not really into kids. I mean, I don't feel old enough to be a dad or anything. So I go out with a girl who's already got a kid. <sighs> it's not the romance of the century, you know. No, I know it isn't, but... Well, you can drift into these things, you know. I wish I'd never invited her to stay here, no. I should have kept my distance. I think I made a bit of a mistake with Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. I rushed into things a little bit and now she's got it into her head that I'm ready to settle down with her and beg her. I feel trapped. Yeah, well, don't look at me, son. I can't help you. But you better come to a decision soon about what you're going to do. Well, this is it. I wonder what it's like. I've never stayed in a place this posh before. Well, why don't you open it up and have a look? a brilliant night, Barry. Thanks. I've really enjoyed myself. I'll see you in the morning. Well, I've ordered us a bottle of champagne. I thought, say, uh, we could have a late night, seeing as we've got no work in the morning. What? Well, you know, me and you. This is, uh, this is our room. Oh, no, it's not. Go on. Get out. Hey? You heard me. Hey, well, look, we've done all right tonight. We've had a dance and that. We've taken things slowly at your pace. I thought you'd have wanted us to stay the night together. Well, I don't, so go and get your own room. Emma. Emma. Why won't you listen, Barry? Look, what is it, this hang-up? You've got about sex, eh? My hang-up? Have you weighed yourself? I haven't got a problem with it because I don't want to do it. Not with you or anyone else. But what is it? Is it me? Don't you fancy me or something? Fellas and their macho pride. I like you, Barry. A lot. But just because I won't jump into bed with you, it doesn't mean I don't fancy you. What are you trying to say? Look, I'll make it simple. I've never slept with anyone before. And, well, the first fella I do sleep with, it'll be the one that I marry. Oh, good night, Barry.